muddy okay. and then I have to pull on the truck Let's under green. Pocket. Okay. Sounds good. I just want to let you know. Run okay. me over, right? we'll, we'll be Are you stand. Brian today? Yeah, and stay away oh, from my truck. Oh, where's Brian? Stay away from my truck. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you don't need to worry about that one with me. I don't know about any, everybody here, but not me. Well, I don't know, maybe a father figure too. Okay, yeah, maybe my dad, but he's not in the car this weekend, so. to my friend Max Coleman who finished seventh in Michigan this weekend in the Arca Racing Series. Awesome week for him and so excited. I hope our luck What'd you around. pull? Not that it matters. Is there even a 60 in there? Yes. 32. I'll take it. Number two, please. 21. Um, last week we did okay. The first feature we ran out of power steering fluid. It ended our day a little early. And then in the second race, um, I think we did pretty good. We finished ninth. I was pretty happy with that, and the car was on fire in the second race. Clear, clear here. So hopefully, my car is going to be the exact same in the practice that I'm about to go get ready for. So the, the problem that has been bothering me since the first week of practice hasn't been the actual steering. It's just been a weird sound and almost like a little bit of a weird friction. Only under pace lap speed or in the pits, never while I'm actually racing. So when I'm up to speed, it has never bothered me before and it was never hard to turn or awkward. It was just a sound and a feel. So I think that finally kind of went and then we had our power steering problem. Check, check. Like, you know when it pushes the rear end out? Big gear, leave it here. Uh, you know what it like pushes the rear end out? It wasn't yeah. like that. It was just I could feel my tires moving, but if okay. I just counter A little counter steer was yeah. good. Because that's the most I've ever seen you come off before, a little free, so that was nice because yeah. you're pushing it hard. So we'll check things out, maybe make a small adjustment if uh, if you want for the second practice. If not, we'll leave it and maybe make an I adjustment like after. I like it. I think I like it. This tire's huge. Put it on the right rear. It'll be too big for the right rear. What? Well, we could put it on the right rear. It have more. We should, because it have has more, more juice tire. Than the right rear. You'll throw it on there. You want to go swap the left or the right rear and the left front? What's the left? What's the right? What is the right rear at right now? Pressure-wise. No. You got stuff on your face. Pizza. Thanks, mom. If we air that up, we're gonna have even more. No. Nah, okay. Never mind. No. No. I like it how it is. I don't want to change it. Okay. When you start talking to yourself, doing the math, it's, an, it's a no. <laughs> You're good. So we're going to leave it for uh, next practice then, Ken? Yeah. Okay. I low-key don't even think I need to run next practice. <laughs> yeah. Done. I, I'm just saying, I think uh -huh. we could just go straight to qualifying. If you're happy with that and comfortable with the car, I'm comfortable with that. Okay. I'm down. Wait, so I have to throw the garbage. Wait. The driver's busy eating. <laughs> she was comfortable after first practice. 
So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to sit on the car, run it in qualifying. Yep. Top eight. Qualifying. Mm. Top eight. Top ten. Top ten. Top ten. Okay, top ten. <laughs> eight. Couple things to address. Time trial is going to be 505 as usual. If you're coming off the track, stay on the high side and pull off. Don't come in low and turn one and two and then kind of go 90 and up. You see the move over flag? If you're going to run the high side, stay the high side. If you're going to be weaving in and out or not driving like you should be on a blue and yellow flag, you'll get a warning, which is the black flag rolled up, pointed, shook, whatever. It's a warning. Take notice of it. If you don't, it will end up with a black flag. They're going to hold us in the infield. Well, that's stupid. They better bump our feature back, give us some more time. Well, yeah, because we, we got to put, we got to field the car. 14696. 14696. Oh, Did you get it? Yeah. Oh, sweet. I'll take that. Nice work. <laughs> Thanks. The second is the 24 Alive Wire, and it gets 14714. Third quake, the 24X of Jordan Lawrence, 14755. Wow, that's weird because Joe showed behind Kendra the whole time. And that's true. I believe fourth is going to be the fourth big ticket, Danny Benedict. Fourth for Danny. One, two, three, seven, Ron Pinnell. Do you know where I finish? I don't. I know the 224s and the 10 went to 10. Yeah. And then the 57 was fourth, or Danny was fourth, the 57, the 9. He read back to about sixth or seventh, and I didn't hear you. And I don't think that has been updated here. They did it. Uh, they did it manually. They set up in tech or up in the starter stand. How did they do that manually? They had the time, but it wasn't updating the receiver. So no sense race even looking. Race monitor. Race monitor. I'm gonna go look in the tech stand. I hope I did good. Pardon? Hope I did good. You did so good. I see my name number one. Yeah, it was messed I up. I, your mom was saying, saying that. She's like, there's got to be something wrong. <laughs> oh my god, that's so rude. See, no. even my mom is so rude. <laughs> great and I'm just really really excited for the feature because I thought it was really really good and even to start it was good so I don't know I'm just really excited I never had a car that good in qualifying to be honest so and I'm very good left turn <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight eight oh that's such a tease nine now you're making me feel like shh. 10, okay, 10, that's good. I said top 10, my dad said top eight. I don't know why he's being so dramatic, but 10, it's good. I saw him write the two and then five, I'm like, oh, skirt. Thought we were really eight there for a minute. Dad, we got 10. That was your goal. Hey, do you know Connor's a built motor? Yeah. Not a crate. I did know that. But how can we always be out of here like we're the I, only crate? I forgot about that, but I did know that. Okay, well, I said so. And so is Ernie. 
So there was some significant changes in the off-season to our rules package. On top of going to a 10-inch slick tire from an 8-inch slick tire, they made a change with the crate-style motors, which is a, uh, a GM crate-style motor. Uh, it's a 602, that's just the, the model number of the, 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 the engine that this class of cars can use. They allowed them to not only have a small clutch like they were running at the end of last year, but to go to a four-barrel carburetor, which is what the motors were designed to use. But historically, up to this year, they had to run the same two-barrel carburetor that is on the built motor. And when we talk about a built motor, that's a motor that's been built by a machine shop, not one that's been mass-produced by GM in their factories. Historically, at the racetrack here, the built motors, and there's a built motor in Kendra's car, have been the, the, the majority of the feature winners. The, the added horsepower, coupled with the tires that they were running, they just seem to be the better package. But this year, over the off-season, not only did they change the tires, but they changed the carburetor, and coupled with the small clutch, it's allowing those cars with the crate motor, which is a more inexpensive option, to run a little better. Uh, they weigh a little less because they've taken some weight out of those cars to try and make them compete. And now the pendulum has swung. Last year, the built cars with the built motor were, uh, they, they were more advantageous. They were the car that were likely to be better in the field. This year, with the changes that they've made, now the pendulum has swung. The cars with the crate motors are the ones that are winning all of the races. There's only a handful of built motors left at the track, and tonight I think Kendra might be the only car that's racing at the track with a built motor. So she's at a little bit of a disadvantage if we look at who's running well this year versus who was running well last year. So they took a little bit of weight out of the built motors this year to try and equal that up. But the car being as old as it is, we're having a hard time removing that weight, but still keeping our weight percentages uh, as, as, as well as we'd like them to be. So we're playing with what we can and what we've been given to try and swing the pendulum back a little bit more. You know, it would be great for us if they just added some weight to all of the crate cars. I don't think that's going to happen. So we've got to work with what we've got and try and do the best with the package that we've gone with this year, which is the built motor package. We don't have it in us to change over to the crate. Uh, even if we did, we won't have the weight to take out of this car to get the advantages that the crate cars have at this point in time in the season. How was the car in qualifying? Good. Was it? So good. Okay. I thought it was a little tight in the middle, but then it was it like wasn't. I don't know. Okay. I thought it was. But I just then dropped I was like, like no, two pounds good. all the way around, just because I had raised them up in order for time trials. So drop them down yeah. so the pressures will build in the feature, and you should be good full send. Top ten starting finish or stop. Let's try that again. Okay, Ready? let's go back from the from from the thing. <laughs> <laughs> top ten qualifying effort. We're gonna run for a top eight. Six. Goals. Top six. Oh. Who's that? <laughs> Who is she? That's our goal. Top six. <laughs> Good finish in race number one. Should make the invert, and we'll see what happens in race number two. Car was decent in qualifying. Let's see what happens, buddy. Full send. Go get it. feature went pretty good. It went green to checker, so there was no cautions. We ran the whole race under green flag conditions. Um, it was pretty good. The car was awesome. We started ninth, finished 10th. Um, we, we fell back a little bit on the start to 11th or 12th, and then we caught back up. even being like 10th position. So I've never really had that before in the late model, so that was a little bit different. Usually we get a little bit better of a kind of situation when we have a lapped car, but this time it was kind of like, it wasn't even letting the guys behind me um, lose track position. It was actually letting them help gain on me. I feel like I got hit at the wrong times every single time. So 
when I'm racing, probably it's noticed by some people that I definitely prefer the outside lane. I talk about it a lot. I love the outside, the outside, the outside. I hate being on the bottom. I think the outside gives you a little bit more freedom because you are in control more than the other person. You hold them down in the corner and you come up to the wall when you want to. So you get to maximize your lane while you're minimizing theirs. So it makes it really easy to get the preferred line when you're on the outside, in my opinion. And I know that my car works really well there, so I'll always choose that. And when Connor tried to get underneath me, it's really, really easy to stick with people, stick with people, stick with people. But then it's almost like sometimes once they get away, it's like they're gone, which sometimes it is like that. But a lot of the times, once you do break away from that, even though I think that being on the outside is one of the optimum racing lanes, I know that when you're by yourself, you're always going to use all of the track and you're going to use it to how your car feels comfortable, which could be even half a lane up or a quarter of a lane instead of having to hold it all the way to the bottom or a full lane outside. So no matter what, you're always in your optimum position when you're by yourself. So once I was able to just break free of Connor and start running my own lines, um, I have a lot of track time on this track, six years now. I have a lot of, I think, knowledge in where my car likes to run and how I like to run my car because I've had this car for two years now. So that definitely helps. So I think that I'm in a really good spot. So it's kind of all about being comfortable and once you get comfortable, you're able to run your best line and that's what I did and that's how I got away from the cars that were behind me. The car got tight loose, so it's tight through the center and then it was loose off. So I was having a little bit of trouble keeping it straight coming out of the corner and I was having a little bit of trouble keeping it. Actually, I wasn't really having trouble keeping it down. It was just that a little bit tight. So when you get off the corner, you're loose, which is okay. That was manageable. Uh, but I think we're gonna have to try to fix that up with some air pressure adjustments in the second one. And we should be good to go and have a great, uh, great car. The tires got too hot, maybe that's why the handling went away, because you ran 30 green, yeah, I should have started them a little why. lower. I think Whoa. that's why. Should have got tight or loose? Tight. It was tight loose, so it was both. Okay. That right rear really got hot. Because it was, yeah, it was pretty loose. That right rear really got up there, so. But like, I've never actually experienced it, so it was really cool still, and like, yeah, a great experience for me. Like, I have an adrenaline rush, and I'm not even the one racing right now, and it's super cool. I had goosebumps when she was out there, and like, the whole thing is like a whole new crowd for me, and I'm really loving it, and I'm definitely going to come again. <laughs> where are you going? Oh. See where I start in the next race. Got it, got it. <laughs> Come on. It's <laughs> not so bad. I wanted an even number. Text me again. I'm not telling anybody. The first feature went really, really well. Uh, she didn't qualify very well. Tenth, I think it was, at a 14. She started 10. I thought she had a better qualifying run than that. It's certainly not her strength, but we went green 35 laps and moved from 10th, uh, fell back and then moved up. Some really, really good racing. She chased down the four, got around her on the, uh, on the bottom. She raced around him, uh, ran away from the four car, caught the 69 car, got underneath the 69 car, passed the 69 car. The car worked really, really well um, and then made some distance on all of them. So no doubt it's, it's probably the best she's run 
uh, holding her line, racing cars really, really well. She was getting in the corners a little better, and again, like we talked about earlier, from the apex out, uh, she did a really, really good job of putting distance between her or any other car that was around her or looking to get towards her or try to stick with her. So real, real happy with the result. She said the brakes were a little spongy. We bled the brakes. We found, again, a little bit of a leak somewhere in the power steering fluid setup. So we cleaned all that down, put some more fluid in it, and we're ready to go for feature number two. She drew a seven in the invert, so she's going to start seven out of 14, and hoping she can hold her spot there and maybe even move up one or two for the finish. until that one caution where all the cars had spun out. I think what had happened was on the first caution we had, I didn't keep the heat in my tires. So when we were under caution, I wasn't scrubbing my tires. So then when we went back to green, I was on a new heat cycle in my tires, which means that the car can change in how it handles, which sucks because you, especially when it's so good and then it does that, so. But then we went after that caution and we had a great, great car, honestly. So we took that car and we did the best we could with it. And uh, we did the best we could with it and we ended up seventh. We fought really hard for a lot of our spots. And um, near the end of the race, I don't want to say I was falling off as much as I was, but um, I definitely was a little bit. So I definitely fell off a little bit um, at the end of the race. I fell away from the 69 and the 46 were fighting right in front of me side by side for a lot of laps but then I kind of fell back but I also gained a lot of track position on the rest of the pack behind me so I mean you'll take some you'll lose some I think overall we did pretty good Uh, a really, really good race, only one caution. There was a little mix up in the middle of it, which enabled the field to get tight again. Uh, started P7, finished P7. Lost a few spots, some really good racing on the racetrack. Again, some real good side-by-side -side racing with a number of the cars out there. Uh, the changes we've made, a couple of minor adjustments over the last, uh, in between the two features, worked out well, the car worked well. She said it kind of was fading away towards the end, although she was making some ground on the car behind her. She wasn't catching the cars in front of her as much as she could, so she kind of ran the last uh, number of laps kind of on her own in the racetrack, which was great. Allows you to get that memory on uh, braking points, acceleration points, turning points. I think she made some huge strides in turn one, two. She started really sweeping that corner, and that's when she was opening up the distance between herself and the car behind her. So really, really, really good feature for us. Overall, fantastic night. Had a couple issues earlier. We bled some brakes. We made a couple adjustments. Very few marks on the car. Great night for us at the, the Speedway. Real happy with our finishes. Two top tens. I think that's uh, some of the best features we've had this year for sure. So real happy with the results and something we can really build on from a, a momentum standpoint and certainly a confidence standpoint from both the driver as well as the crew chief. got ninth and a seventh, um, which is close to my best. I really, really wanted to get that top five. I was really close uh, to the 69 and the 46. Um, I think I even peeked under once or twice, but I just couldn't make the pass. And uh, definitely the three wide pass is a risky one, and I don't want to have to do it unless I have to. 